So now after we are done with Mendeleev's classification, we discussed Mendeleev's achievements, we discussed Mendeleev's periodic law, and we discussed the limitations of Mendeleev's periodic table. But now let us come to the form of classification which is most prevalent in today's chemical study, that is the modern periodic table. Now, after Mendeleev's discovery, although Mendeleev's discovery was widely accepted, but it had its limitations. So later on, scientists studied and many realized that the atomic mass classification, classification based on atomic mass, wasn't very accurate because it did pose many problems. So then scientists began to look for methods, alternative ideas and alternative bases for classification of elements. And then came a man, a British man, again, like Newlands, and his name was Henry Moseley. Henry Moseley came up with the idea of the atomic number. And this was denoted by Z. Henry Moseley said, that the atomic number was a very good method of classification of elements and based on atomic number elements could be classified very very conveniently now atomic number was basically the number of protons the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom in the nucleus of an atom of an element of an atom of a given element so based on the concept of atomic number, Moseley came up with the idea of classification of elements. And he formulated a law, which he called the modern periodic law. Modern periodic law. Now, just like Mendeleev formulated his own periodic law based on atomic mass, Moseley formulated the modern periodic law again in terms of atomic number and he said that the physical and chemical properties of elements the physical and chemical properties of elements are a periodic function are a periodic function Of their atomic number. Of their atomic number. So this was the modern periodic law. And Mosley formulated this law and then classified elements based on atomic number. And he came up with the modern periodic table, also called the long form of the periodic table, and also called Mosley's periodic table. Now, let us have a look at the periodic table now. He classified elements on the basis of atomic number. So, atomic mass system was abolished. Now, again, he classified elements somewhat similar to Mendeleev. He had vertical columns called groups and he had horizontal rows called periods. So, these were your groups. And these were your periods. So I should go like this, maybe. Like this. Okay. So these were your periods. Okay. Groups and periods. Now, in the modern periodic table, we have 18 groups and 7 periods. 18 groups and 7 periods. He made 18 groups and 7 periods. And in a group, there were elements of similar properties. Elements of similar properties. For example, lithium, beryllium, sorry, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium. So you can see lithium has one valence electron right sodium also has one valence electron potassium has one valence electron rubidium has one valence electron so in one way they all form cations with one 
positive charge so lithium plus sodium plus potassium plus rubidium plus and so on and so forth right so that is one similarity so in this way he classified elements into groups and periods with groups having elements of similar property something which was somewhat the same as Mendeleev's approach right so this is one thing next thing he classified elements on the basis of atomic masses and he grouped them in such a way he grouped them in such a way that elements in a period okay elements in a period had the same number of shells in their electronic configuration had the same number of shells in their electronic configuration so if you see let me take the first period oh sorry second period so this is period two you can see this is one two three four five six seven periods and then you can see let's take the second period so i'm taking lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine neon right so you can see lithium has how many uh, what's the atomic number of lithium it is two oh, sorry three then beryllium four boron five carbon six nitrogen seven oxygen eight fluorine nine and neon ten so lithium configuration would be two comma one beryllium would be two comma two boron would be two comma three carbon would be two comma four nitrogen would be two comma five 2,6 for oxygen, 2,7 for fluorine, and 2,8 for neon. So you will see that the number of orbits in the period, number of orbits is equal to 2 for all the elements, right? And the number of orbits was the period number. The number of orbits was the period number. Now you can see that number of orbits in each element is 2 orbits. So now if you see it here, it is placed in period 2. Right? So the number of orbits gave us an idea of the period number of the elements. Of the period number of the elements. Okay? So that is one thing. Okay? That's one more thing of the position of elements. Right? Then he also, like Mendeleev, placed lanthanides and actinides at the bottom of the table. Can you see that? Like lanthanum and actinum from 57 to uh, 71 are lanthanides. That is from lanthanide, uh, from lanthanum up till your LU. That is the 71st uh, element. And then the actinides, which started from 88, sorry, 89 and went on to 103. Right? So he placed them again at the bottom of the periodic table away from the main body like Mendeleev did, like lanthanides and then actinides, right? So why they are placed, you learn this in higher classes because there is a particular logic behind it which you will not be able to understand. There's a concept of orbitals which you don't know yet. So he placed them there and then you can see that there were 18 groups and there were 7 periods in his periodic table, right? One more thing to be noted is that there was a zigzag line here. Okay, there was a zigzag line. Now, this zigzag line basically separated the metals from the non metals. So, if you see here, up till here, you will only find your non metal, you will only find your metals aluminium, your gallium, your indium, your thallium. Okay, and all these and then lead, you will see silver, you will see zinc, okay, you will see palladium. So all these are metals, right? And in these metals, you will see that from this zigzag line, you'll find the non-metals or the uh, metalloids. So boron, silicon, arsen uh, your arsenic, then you have carbon, nitrogen, ox all these are non-metals. So this zigzag line separated the metals from the non-metals, right? So I hope that's absolutely clear and this was what was basically um, uh, Mo uh, Mosley's periodic table, right? Very similar to that of Mendeleev, but again, it had its changes. It was based on atomic number and not on atomic mass, right? So again, let's list down the achievements of this table. Okay, so the achievements of this table.
what are the very very important uh, you know achievements of this table number one it solved the problem of isotopes how did that happen well let's see now you know that isotopes are, are atoms of the same element that have same atomic number but the different atomic masses now when mendeleev formulated his table this isotopes formed uh, you know posed a problem because isotopes had different atomic masses and mendeleev's table was based on atomic masses so each isotope would have to be given its unique position in his table which he did not do but when mosley came up with this table it was based on atomic number and since atomic number of isotopes is same right isotopes have the same atomic number they need not have to be given different unique positions so one element could have one position with one unique atomic number and all its isotopes would be included there irrespective of their atomic mass so therefore the use of atomic number as a basis solved the problem of isotopes right that's one thing second thing was that it was largely flawless largely flawless there were hardly any mistakes in this periodic table whenever there was some new discovery it could be fit in somewhere or the other and largely it was a flawless table there was proper classification there was proper uh, arrangement of elements and it was just beautiful 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 right so it was largely a flawless table right so although it involved inputs from robrina as well from uh, newland as well because you see again that eighth element rule applies here still calcium so again that is being used although it is accumulation it is accumulation of all the efforts of different scientists over years and years but ultimately you can see that it yielded fruit with a largely flawless table right now one more thing i want to note here i want to tell you here although this is not as such in your course but just understand it for now it's just for your knowledge elements here right elements here these elements this block of elements right it is called the s block it is called the s block of elements okay the s block of elements these elements here okay these elements which are the transition metals they are called transition metals they are the d block of elements okay the d block of elements this group here on the rightmost part okay this is called the p block p block of elements the p block of elements okay and this group here this block here of elements just outside the main body is called the f block of elements lanthanides and actinides okay so these are the four blocks of the modern periodic table don't try, really try to reiterate or stress yourself on to trying to understand how these are named you will understand once you learn about orbitals in 11th and 12th classes right so this is just the distribution of the blocks of the periodic table right and these were the main achievements of this table similar achievements to that of mendeleev table now again let us try to have a look at the drawbacks as well although they are really really few but i want to discuss them anyway the major drawback the only major drawback of this table was again the position of hydrogen again hydrogen could not be given a fixed position it is still a problem in the modern periodic table because hydrogen can be included in both the alkali metals that is the first group as well as the halogens that is the 17th group because it has the ability to lose one electron and form an h plus ion and also to gain one electron and form a hydride ion with h minus right so again that was a problem in the modern periodic table as well right so these are the achievements and the drawbacks of the position of hydrogen that was the position of hydrogen in the modern periodic table right so i hope the position uh, of elements is clear i hope the mo i hope the table is clear i hope the properties of the table are clear i hope everything in this table is absolutely crystal clear to all of you right and one more thing to understand here is that each shell of an atom okay it has an orbit number right and the maximum accommodation maximum accommodation of electrons of electrons 
in nth shell in nth shell is given by the 2n square rule right you know that this is from class 9th structure of atom that the maximum number of electrons that the nth shell can accommodate is 2n square that is 2 into the square of the orbit number right so 2n square rule this is used to determine the position also sometimes right it is important hence okay so please try to just remember this accommodation of electrons as well right so with this we are pretty much done with the discussion on the modern periodic table if there is any kind of doubt please leave it in the comment section below and thank you very much for joining me in the next video we will begin the variation of periodic properties in the periodic table thank you